Good evening, Gibbs families. I'm coming out to you this evening with a vlog on project-based learning. Um, now, I know that you know a lot about project-based learning from just the work that your students have been doing this year um, throughout their classes, but I wanted to give you an overview and a reminder of why we have project-based learning at the sixth grade level, what the purpose of the project-based learning is at the sixth grade level, and a little bit of a view into what trimester three would have been like if we were in school and not through remote learning. It was uh, a little difficult to put this together in order for kids to continue with their trimester three work. And so, you know, with a couple of weeks left of school through June and also the summertime, I thought this might be a good way if you're looking for something project based to do with your children that you can understand a little bit of the underpinnings and where they were going with this work when they were in school. So I am going to present this slideshow off to you so that you can see what we're working with here. Um, and I will give you a little bit of re a, a review, except of course now we are at the very beginning, end of the slideshow, and that's not gonna help us out very much. Let me get us back to the beginning and then we can be ready to go. So project-based learning is our topic for today. And I want to give you a little bit of a peek into what project-based learning is at Gibbs and beyond. Gold standard project-based learning, which if you're gonna just do a general Google search on project-based learning, you're gonna come up with um, quite a few sites that talk about gold standard project-based learning. And gold standard PBL has certain hallmarks and components. Um, gold standard PBL helps engage students in seven essential design elements, which I'll talk a little bit about um, in the next few slides. Um, the project is driven by a challenging problem or question. And there's where you kind of get the meat of what you're doing when you're when you're working with project-based learning. A project isn't necessarily a poster board that's attached to a book or a diorama that you're making of an ancient civilization. It really asks you not to take information and think of a different way to say it. It asks you to research and answer a question or a problem. Um, and there's really the biggest difference that kids up until sixth grade have really been involved in just finding information and finding ways to say that information for their audience. This is a little bit different. There's actually a research element here and some other essential design elements that you'll see. So at Gibbs, we've acknowledged that this type of learning is new for students. So the skills that they need in order to engage in this type of learning, this project-based learning, need to be developed. And so we call it, very affectionately, Rose Gold PBL, um, and have designed a program that really releases responsibility out to students over, over the three trimesters so that they're ready to really engage in more and more project-based learning as they move through middle school. So when you're talking about a gold standard approach to project-based learning, you're talking about challenging problems or questions. You're talking about sustained inquiry. So for, a, you know, over a certain amount of time, they're really digging in and learning about whatever topic it is that the project is based. Um, it's authentic. So it's not just, you know, something that students don't see meaning to. Um, it's authentic to them and it's authentic to the community. There's student voice and choice in gold standard project-based learning. There's opportunities for reflection. There's critique and revision both from peers and teachers. And there's also a public product of some sort. Um, this year we had some really cool uh, podcasts. We had movies, we had um, different sl uh, slide decks that were made. We had um, games that kids created on, on um, Scratch and in DML. It was, it was a very, very, some very cool products um, at the end of trimester one and two. So what does this kind of learning do and why is project-based learning something you're hearing a lot about? Well, it makes school more engaging for sure. Um, it improves learning. It builds success skills for college, career, and life. It addresses standards. It provides opportunities for use of technology in a way that isn't just going onto YouTube or, you know, playing a game, you're actually really using technology to come to, to an end answer and result. It connects students with the school in some way, with community in some way, and with the real world in some way. And it promotes educational equity because students can approach these projects where they're at. 
and take them to the next space and also talk about something they're really interested in. So your engagement level and your equity level goes way up when you're working with project-based items. So what kind of acknowledgement has Gibbs made to this? Well, here's, here's what we've done. We've, we've acknowledged that not only do students benefit from this type of learning, but they're also building lots of skills. And then we stopped for a second and thought, hey, wait a minute, this is sixth grade. They need a lot of skill building in order to be able to engage in this type of project-based learning successfully. What skills do they need that we should be working on in order to provide them with tools to do this kind of learning for the rest of their middle school, high school, college, career, and beyond. So we talk about planning. Students need help with that. It's an executive functioning skill that is something they really should be working on in sixth grade and, and beyond and before, but at the sixth grade level especially, their um, frontal lobes, you've heard me talk about a lot about sixth grade frontal lobes, they're, they're prime for this kind of work. So planning, prioritizing, who's first, second, third, managing their time, um, organizing their work, persisting, you're going to come up against an obstacle. How do you pivot? How do you persist? Take notes that you can actually use again. I'm um, using technology in new um, and informative ways. Working in groups and being flexible about working in groups and then reflecting on work. And the reflecting part about it isn't just looking at the work and saying, oh, yeah, that's good. Or, oh, yeah, that we could have. It's actually thinking going back and making changes. So these are all things that sixth graders should have in their toolbox and should have an opportunity to practice. So we wanted to make sure that the Gibbs project-based learning acknowledge that kids aren't quite there with all of these skills yet. And so they'll grow into the gold standard. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as we move throughout the rest of the slide deck. So we designed our work to release responsibility out to students. In trimester one, the whole entire school engaged in answering the question, why is a sixth grade only school a great place to go to sixth grade? What are the advantages and are there disadvantages? And this was a really cool way for students to look at, well, what is a sixth grade brain doing right now? What kinds of things do we need to practice? What's going on in our environment that might help us be good students? What's going on that might help us not be great students? Um, what kinds of other things can we hear from, from schools in other places that are middle schools six, seven, and eight? Are there any other sixth grade schools? So by the end of this project, we had come out with uh, pages for uh, what it's like to go to a sixth grade only school book. Um, and each, each project-based learning class was able to contribute to that and show a product that really allowed them to reflect upon wow, this is a pretty great place to go to school and here are the reasons why. Um, and so that started us off on scaffolding the work of a project-based learning uh, type of environment for students. So in trimester two, we released the responsibility out a little bit to the students. So the teacher actually then came up with the topic that the students would be working on. And they might have worked in some smaller groups on an aspect of that topic, which would have been a little bit more around choice. Um, one this year was around practice of a new talent or skill. And the whole theory behind how many hours you have to practice something in order to become an expert. And they would have put on a non-talent show um, had we been stayed in school long enough. But that was one of the topics. Another was building a company that was going to fly to outer space and what would be involved in doing that and which part of the company did you want to work in and so there was some academic voice and choice there as well and then trimester three would have been a students engage in a choose your own adventure you know this could could have been this is something that could have been related to the school community or the community at large um, one of our learning communities was doing quite a bit with social justice and had brought in quite a few community uh, members some from Arlington Eats, some different authors that wrote on social justice topics, and they were about ready to adopt a cause and you know work with that cause and do some research there, and that was going to be their project. So um, the trimester three opportunity that they did not have is something that you might be able to do a little bit at home in the remainder of the school year, or you could also push out into your summer if that's something that would work for your family. Um, so remember, 
all of those experiences that I just talked about with you was to get them to plan, prioritize, manage time, organize, persist, take notes, use technology, work in groups flexibly, and reflect. So as you can see over those three trimesters, they had lots of opportunity to do those things. And by the end, they were actually managing a lot of it on their own, closer to the gold standard, which if you remember is challenging problem or questions. We came up with all of those at the beginning of the year, but by the end, they were working on that on their own. Sustained inquiry is really in all of them. Authenticity, we tried to make things as authentic as we could for the students. Um, you know, they, they would then have started to pick things that were really meaningful to them toward the end, which would also lead us into student voice and choice. Lots of reflection built in about their projects and uh, opportunities for students to critique each other and revise with each other. And then there was a public product of some, of some sort. So how might you keep this up at home? Um, you know, there's lots of different ways and lots of different topics. And the fun thing about this is that, you know, your family might lean toward one or the other or your children might, and that's just fine. You know, there's some ideas here in science. You could think about a cause in our area. Maybe it has to do with a local conservation area or an animal that is endangered here in this part of the world um, and find a challenging question. You could collect data around something and discover a question it might lead you to. That might be how you actually come up with your question. What does this data make you wonder about? Um, I know we did in our family, we started collecting data around our corona um, time being at home, our eating habits, and how many things we were, were um, consuming that we maybe shouldn't be consuming, and what did that lead us to? And um, you know, so we're starting to formulate some questions around that. ELA, there's social justice authors, they're out there, they're ready to be discovered, and you could pick one or even a book with a social justice cause, adopt the cause, find a question. Uh, in social studies, you know, define civics for your child. What does civics mean? Think about something that your child might be wondering about and where you could go for more um, information. Uh, in the arts, messages in music, artists who recycle, there's so many things that um, the world has, has the world of the arts just has so many great questions out there. And one of them might be, why is it so important in our schools to have art? What, do, what does arts and music do for us as learners? That's a great question to do a project-based learning around. Um, physical education, why is exercise important on so many levels? What certain exercises do what? What kind of program would you put together to stay healthy in your family or for somebody else? Why? There's lots of ways you can gear your, your kiddos toward these, these questions um, and really just, you know, start to engage their minds in continuing to think about what happens when I have a question or I'm posed a question. How do I go through these different steps that I learned at Gibbs School in project-based learning to answer the question and to present my answer out to, to an audience? So I hope this helped you uh, remember what project-based learning is a, a little bit and you got a reminder of what it is that the, your kiddos were able to experience in school and maybe it will inspire you to push beyond that and uh, be able to keep this up at home in some way in the next couple weeks of school or, or over the summer. And I would love to hear about any projects that you're kicking off or that you're starting. Um, that would absolutely make my day. So thank you so much for tuning in and for watching. I hope you found it informative and I hope you kick up a lot of project-based learning at home. See you soon.